Hello guys, we're going to be moving toward lesson 10.1, Algebra, page 651. The lesson is called Measures of Center. So basically, you're going to be receiving data, set of data, and you are going to be uh, calculating uh, certain measures that could measure the center of the data. You will understand what we're saying throughout the lesson. We'll start with a couple of definitions, such as the definition of a variable. It's is uh, any characteristics, number, or quantity that can be counted or measured. A variable could be quantitative or qualitative. Quantitative data, that means it could have a quantity. You, can, uh, you could associate it with a quantity. So it could be measured, such as height, he's 160 centimeters, grade, she took 96 out of 100. Or qualitative data, qualitative, it discusses a quality or a trait. So it could not be measured, for example, the color of the eyes or a nationality. Now, what the lesson itself revolves around, it revolves around measure of the center or the central tendency, which are basically three basic measures, mean, median, mode. In general, these uh, measures, uh, uh, they try to calculate or try to find the center of the data set that you have. As a general definition, it is when the quantitative data in one variable are summarized using a single number to represent what is its average or typical to it, or the middle or the uh, center of these data. Uh, we will be using this table in a while. This is an example. We will start by measuring the mean. Mean, you, you, could, you could just think uh, about the mean as an average. So what is the average of this data set? Or the general definition is the sum of the values. So when you add all the values, so sum of the values in a data set divided by the total number of values. Let's take an example. So basically the question in here was, could you please find the mean? We said, yes, of course we could. The mean is when we add all the numbers, all the data given to us. So three plus six plus four plus zero plus three plus seven divided by how many are there uh, how many teams have played so we've got one two three four five six so we've got six teams so i added the data at the beginning and then divided by six for those of you who are asking where did you get the six from you, you just look at the first column in the table and count how many teams are there. You've got Badgers, Hornets, Bulldogs, Vikings, Rangers, Panthers. So you've got six teams. Okay, where did you get the other values from? It's it's the hits each team had, had gotten. So to calculate the mean, you should add the data. 3 plus 6 plus 4 plus 0 plus 3 plus 7. Divided by how many teams were there? So 6. The answer is going to be 23 divided by 6, which is approximately 3.83. And if you've rounded it, it's going to be around 4 hits a game. Or if you want to calculate the median, this is another measure of the center. Median, uh, in its simplest uh, way to understand it, it's just take it as the middle value, the value that you could find exactly in the middle of the data set after arranging it from least to greatest. So, to find the mean, start by arranging your data from the least to the greatest. Of course, the data is given in front of you in the table. So, I'm going to arrange them as 0, 3, 3, 4, 6, 7. So, I've arranged them from the least value to the greatest value. Now, the question was, could you please find the mean? We said, of course, yes, we could find the me med median. Excuse me. Could you find the median? Yes, we can find the median. Median is the middle value it's the value that is exactly in the middle of course i'm going to try to look for the uh, value that's exactly in the middle but i've hit a wall i'm uh, th there's a problem there's no exact middle value because there are two values that are in the middle which are three and four so both values three and four both are in the middle so how am I supposed to get the mean? How am I supposed to get the uh, middle value? You get, the, you, in order to get the median, you're supposed to get the number that's exactly between three and four. So you get the average of three and four. So what you're going to do is add three plus 
4 divided by 2. So, to calculate the median in such a case, because, because we had a problem in here, the, we don't have a single middle value, we have two middle values, which are 3 and 4. And that's not possible because the median is a single value. So in order to calculate the median, we're supposed to add 3 plus 4 and divide them by 2. So in this case, the median is or supposed to, is supposed to be 3.5. Mode. Mode is the easiest of them all. Med mode is the value that is mostly repeated. The value that you can, that, that you can find it more often, often throughout this uh, table. So let's look at the table. Which value had been repeated uh, multiple times? 3, 6, 4, 0, 3, 7. Is there any value that had been repeated? Yes, it's 3. So then the mode in this case is 3. That's good. So these are the measures of the uh, of central tendency. So basically, these measures kind of kind of uh, uh, try to find the center of the uh, of the group of data that you have in hand, which are the mean. It tries to find the average. Median. It finds the middle number. Mode. It finds the most common or most popular number, the number that was uh, frequently mentioned. And there is a super, super, super important term to understand, which is the outlier. Outlier is a number in a set that is much bigger or smaller than the rest of the numbers. I'm going to give you an example. Let's suppose we have a student whose, whose grades are 90, 95, 97, and 100. And his fifth grade is 3 out of 100. So then 3 is the outlier because it's definitely way smaller than the rest of the numbers. Let's take another example. Let's suppose uh, another student, uh, a misfortunate student, an unfortunate student, his grades were uh, uh, 10, 15, 17, 20, and the fifth grade was 99. So definitely 99 is an outlier because it is way much bigger than the rest of the numbers. Now, why do we need the outlier? Outlier uh, gives us certain hints on how do we analyze. We will take it in a while. We will get to it in a while. Uh, now, it's our job uh, to choose which is the best measure of the central tendency. Of course, we have went through the mean. Mean is used to describe the middle of a set. Uh, that does not have an outlier. So if there is a set that has no outlier, we are going to be using mean. Median to describe the middle value of a set of data that does have an outlier. So whenever there is an outlier, we do not go through the mean or we do not take mean the mean as, a, uh, as the best measure of central tendency. We try to take the median or the mode. So mode you use mode when data is not numeric or when choosing the most popular item. Uh, such as the favorite serial. Okay. Okay. Now, in this example, guys, this is this example is super, super important because we're going to be practicing what we've taken and we're going to analyze the data. So basically, we have two uh, different sets of data. Let's read the question. Compare and contrast the measures of center of the employee salaries for the two stores based on the statistics. Which store pays its employees better? So we're, our job is to find which store pays its employees better. Of course, we're going to calculate the mean for both stores, median for both, and the mode for both. We're going to, you, you guys are going to pay super attention with me in order to understand which store pays better by analyzing the measures of center that we are going to be calculating. Let's start with calculating the mean. So to calculate the mean for both uh, uh, stores. I'll start by big win games. Of course, to calculate the mean, I'm supposed to add all the numbers. So 10.80 plus 11 plus 11.50 plus 10 plus 10.90 plus 13.90 plus 10.80 plus 11.20 divide by how many are there? How many uh, 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 how many items are there? So 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you're gonna divide by eight, and this is how we've got uh, the mean for the big win games. Exactly, we're gonna apply exactly the same strategy in order to calculate the mean for uh, game plays. So basically, the mean for big win games it's eleven point twenty six dollars. For game plays, it's nine point ninety five dollars. But this is for the mean. As for the median, we're going to order them from the least to greatest and find the value that is exactly in the middle. Uh, in this case, we have found that uh, that we have two values that are in the middle for big win games, 10.9 and 11. So I'm going to add them. So 10.9 plus 11 divided by 2 in order to get the median. As for gameplays, exactly the same. To find the median, we're going to take the middle values, which are 9.5 and 10.4. You're going to take 9.5 plus 10.4, divide them by 2 in order to get the median as $9.95, uh, the median for gameplays. As for the median for big win games, is $10.95. We're going to calculate the mode also. The mode is the most repeated uh, number. So for big win games, it's going to be $10.80. As for game plays, it's $9.50. Now, how are we going to analyze the set of data in front of us? Remember, if there is an outlier, so if there is a number that's way bigger than the rest or way smaller than the rest, we do not take the mean as a uh, as a measure or as a uh, uh, as a as a measure of the center in order to analyze this set of data let's see let's go back to the table and check whether whether there is a, an outlier or not so 10.80 11 11.50 10 10.90 13.90 10.80 11.20 11 for big win games so there are no outliers here for game plays 9 9.50, 9.50, 10.40, 10.40, 10.50, 10.80, 20.50, 9.50. There is an outlier here, which is 20.50, because it's way bigger than the rest of the set. So we're not going to be using the mean as a measure of the center or in order to compare both stores. I'm not going to be using the mean. So since, since game place has 20.50, which is an outlier, we're not going to be using the mean as a uh, we're not going to be using the mean in order to compare both stores i'm going to be using the median and the mode so because the mean is not accurate is a not an accurate representation of the salary of most employees so we're going to be comparing between the median and the mode for big win games Okay, let's go back a bit in order to calculate, to, to check which median is higher. So the median for big win games is $10.95, which is higher than the median for game plays, $9.95. So obviously big win games pay uh, their employees a little better than uh, game plays. Let's check the mode. The mode for big win games is $10.80, where for game plays it's $9.50. So in both measures, big win games uh, are better than gameplay so then definitely big win games uh, pay their employees better than game plays remember guys whenever there's an outlier we are going to disregard the mean as a measure of the center because it would not be an accurate representation we will be going for the uh, median and the mode in order to help us to check which store is uh, paying higher than the other Okay, now uh, you may find certain measures of center that do not give you the information you need to fully analyze a situation. In that case, you'll need to determine which additional statistics would be useful to have. Listen, guys, sometimes uh, you're going to be given an example such as the following. For example, researching the employee salary at, spe at a specific company. And the question would be, which measure of center best describe the following statement? So which measure of center best describe the employee salary at a specific company of course you should take into, consider into consideration that the salary of the employees the, it's not the same so you've got very high salaries very low salaries and salaries that are in the middle so it wouldn't be fair 
it wouldn't be accurate to take the mean. So the mean may not accurately describe the salary of most employees, neither the mode. So then that would leave us with the median. The median would be best. The median will find us exactly the middle value of the uh, uh, employee salary at a specific company. While the attendance of a football game, attendance of a, foot, a football game or a musical concert, whatever. Uh, so the attendance of a football game at a certain high school, of course, we're going to be using the mean because the mean attendance for each game in a season would be best because uh, the attendance changes with each game. It is uh, unlikely that there is an outlier. So it will, it will, it will calculate the mean will calculate the average for the attendance of or at a football game at a uh, certain high school. Uh, the other part of the lesson was, uh, is going to be percentiles. Percentiles is usually used whenever, uh, uh, whenever uh, uh, we have a standardized test and there has to be a score for a standardized test. Percentile measures measure rank from the bottom and tell us what percent uh, or of the scores were below a given score. So basically, whenever we, say, we talk about percentiles, we are going to check how many or what is the percent of scores that are below a certain score. For example, if I said 40th percentile, so you are going to check how many people or how many data could you find below this rank. The lowest percentile is first percentile and the highest is the 99th percentile. There are no zero or hundredth percentile ranks. How do we find a percentile? Let's take this example. We have this table on uh, multiple uh, uh, on multiple uh, participants in a talent show and their scores. So let me read the question for you guys. A talent show was held for 20 finalists in the Teen Idol contest. Each performer received a score from 0 through 30, with 30 being the highest. Find Victor's per percentile rank. Listen, guys, whenever you are asked to calculate the percentile rank, there is a certain formula to go through. But before you go through the formula, I, want, I would like you guys to order your data from the greatest to least. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. When you are calculating the median, you order from least to greatest. But when you're finding the percentile, you order from the greatest to least. I repeat it one more time. The median, least to greatest. Percentile or finding the percentile rank, you're going to order from greatest to least. Let's go. Let's order from greatest to least. So, of course, we're going to start by the highest score, which is 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, and on you go, blah, 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 until you reach the uh, least grade, which is 4. So, step number one is ordering from greatest to least. Second step is find Victor's, uh, Victor's place. Victor actually, uh, Victor's position, sorry. Victor scored, how much did Victor score? Victor scored 28. So, so we have found Victor as the uh, uh, as the uh, guy who scored twenty eight. Now your job is to find how many scores are below Victor's score. Remember, Victor scored twenty eight. So all you have to do now is to count how many scores are below Victor's score. Let's count. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I have 18 scores that are below Victor's score. I repeat one more time. Guys, Victor scored 28. Your job is to count how many people scored below Victor's score. So in my case, I counted them. We have 18 people who had scored below Victor. So I'm going to apply the formula now. The formula says that you are going to find the number of scores below 28. Of course, someone might ask, why, why did you choose 28? Because 28 is Victor's score. So the formula says the following. You should find the number of scores below 28 and divide them by the total number of scores. How? Well, what is the total number of scores? It's already given in the question, which is 20 finalists. So this is the total number of 
people who had participated so then it's going to be the total number of scores will be 20 and then multiply by 100 i repeat it one more time the formula says the following you should you're supposed to find the number of scores below 28 divided by the total number of scores multiplied by 100 well, okay let's calculate it what is the number of scores below 28 we already found it 18 divided by what's the total number of scores it's 20 it's given it's already given in the question 20 finalists and then 18 divided by 20 multiplied by 100 so it's going the answer is going to be 90 so if you were asked uh, what is or find victor's percentile rank your answer will be victor scored at the 90th percentile in the contest let's find another guy's percentile rank which is fernando's okay but before we go to fernando we're supposed to, under, to, to know what is fernando's grade uh, fernando scored 15 okay guys so fernando scored 15 let's highlight 15 or let's circle 15 whatever and count how many numbers are below fernando's so 15 let's count how many numbers are below 15 we have one two three four five six seven eight so it's eight divided by the total number which is 20 so eight divided by 20 multiplied by 100 so it's going to be 40 so fernando scored at the 40th percentile in this contest thank you